So we have two balls, each thrown horizontally from the same height above level ground. So ball one is thrown horizontally. So we have V0, one, and we have V0, two. V0, two is greater. Air resistance is negligible. How do the accelerations of the balls compare? Well, once released, there is no horizontal acceleration. All the acceleration is vertical, and that's caused by gravity. And the acceleration something experienced is independent of whatever speed it has. The vertical acceleration g is 10, no matter how fast it's traveling or whether it's traveling at zero. So acceleration is not greater for two. They are equal. So that eliminates two out of the five choices right off the bat. How do the accelerations and the time it takes them to hit the ground compare? Well, they're both covering the same vertical distance. And that same vertical distance is one-half at squared plus v0t plus x0. So if they are starting at the same height, they have the same x0. They have the same initial vertical velocity, which is 0. That term drops out. They fall the same distance, and they have the same acceleration, so therefore it will take the same time. So the time to hit the ground is equal, not greater for ball 2, not less for ball 2. They are equal, 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 choice E. So we have this scenario here. We've got this block one sliding to the right toward an ideal spring. For our answering this question, it doesn't really matter exactly what an ideal spring is. It's something we'll learn about later, but it doesn't really affect our ability to answer this question. Effect to, ball, to block two, so V0 is zero, and this has a velocity in that direction. At time one, the block reaches the spring. So at time one, it is here. The minute it hits the spring, the velocity will decrease. It will experience an acceleration. And the acceleration, since the thing is going to slow, it's like it's being pushed in this direction. So the acceleration is in that direction. If our coordinate system is positive this way and negative this way, then the acceleration is negative. But you might also imagine that once this block, as soon as it hits the spring, the spring is going to compress some. But the spring is going to also kind of push back, which will cause this block to move in that direction. They slide without friction. Right is positive. Which graphs could represent the acceleration of block two? So let's just focus with that. The acceleration of block two, not the acceleration of block one. So block two is going to accelerate that way in the positive direction. So it has zero acceleration, and then it's going to become positive. So if we look at the acceleration of block two, it's zero and then becomes positive. This one is zero, and the acceleration becomes positive. Zero and positive. Zero and positive. So ultimately now, what we're distinguishing from the accelerations is does the acceleration continue? Does the acceleration become positive and reach some value and continue to accelerate indefinitely? That's what this says. So this means it's speeding up and it continues to speed up and it never stops speeding up. That is the difference between this one too. It says it speeds up and then the rate it's speeding up decreases and it stops speeding up. So there's a point when it stops speeding up, and this one says it's going to speed up forever. So clearly when we express it that way, that it's going to speed up forever, 
That's really hard to imagine that when this thing hits this, it's just going to keep speeding up and keep speeding up and keeps this block is going to keep speeding up forever and ever and ever and ever. That just can't be the case. So this one is out. These two are out. The next question has to do with the center of mass acceleration. Now, for that reason, I think that this question is mislabeled. That this, that this makes the question not only unit one, but really to understand this properly, we know, need to know units two and units five. But I'm going to explain it anyway because we can have a sense of what is going to be the case. If we look at the two remaining choices, this one says the center of mass accelerate has no acceleration ever. It's zero the entire time. And this one says it's zero, and then there's a negative acceleration, and then it returns to zero. So that's really the distinguishing factor. Is the syst Does the system have no acceleration at any time, or does it? So that makes it perhaps a little simpler to deal with. So I'm going to clean this diagram up, and let's imagine what's happening to the center of mass. So we have these two bodies like this at this moment in time. The center of mass, if they're identical, does it tell us they're identical? It actually doesn't matter as long as the masses don't change. So let's say the center of mass is right there. Now when the block moves here, the center of mass is going to change by half that distance it moved. So the center of mass is going to become here. And if we were to trace this out, and you think through, that because this is moving at constant velocity up until the time it hits, and this has a velocity equal to zero, that the center of mass will be moving at a, all the movement is about block one, and block one is moving at a constant rate, which will then change the center of mass at a constant rate. So in other words, the acceleration of the center of mass would be equal to zero. So up until at least time one, the acceleration is zero. That matches there, and that matches there. So really the question now is that if the center of mass has a velocity in this direction toward the right, if the center of mass has a velocity toward the right, and that center of mass velocity is changing because of the velocity of block one, if the velocity of block one changes, if the velocity of block one changes, then we would expect the velocity of the center of mass to change. The velocity of the center of mass to change. So let's imagine now what happens once the block hits. Once this block hits, this velocity is going to decrease. But the velocity of the block 2, it's not going to move immediately. So this block is going to slow down while the spring compresses to a certain point before this block moves. So this one will stand still while this one slows down. So the center of mass will no longer continue to move at a constant speed until the spring compresses and reaches kind of a balance with itself. So in other words, what we get is the center of mass is moving along like this. We make impact and the center of mass sl movement slows down because it's compressing the spring and the this block is not moving. So what that means is there is acceleration. And since the block is slowing down as it moves this way, since it's slowing this way, the acceleration is in that direction, which is negative. That's why it's choice C. So you can see this is something you can reason out 
using kinematics. You have to be able to really model and think through what's going on with the spring. But really, I think this is a question better served after uning, learning units two and units five, especially unit two. Our next question, we look at this and we've got a ball released from rest and one going horizontally. Okay, so we've got experiment one, experiment two. This is a drop. This is the, this is the horizontal projectile. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Next, we have position time graphs. Position time, this one, it's X. It doesn't have any X. The X stays the same. And that's exactly what we see. Zero slope, the slope is delta X over delta T, which is the velocity. Area is meaningless. This one shows a constant slope, so it shows a constant velocity as it's moving in the horizontal direction like we'd expect. The vertical position Again, we see the velocity. The velocity is maybe very small, and it's getting bigger and bigger. It's increasing, and so is this one. And in fact, they look identical, and they should look identical because both of them are experiencing the acceler same acceleration, g. All right. And we can read this whole thing, and it's basically the scenario that we described there. Conducted at the same time, they drop the ball from rest at the same instant, student horizontally. Ah, this might remind us of our video of the shoot and drop where Alan conducted that experiment and did those billiard balls. After they've traveled half their vertical distance, what is the acceleration, the center of the mass of their system relative to the floor? The acceleration of the center of mass. Now, when we have a center of mass, we can... and that's relative to the Earth, we have these two objects. So this one is going to take this kind of path. This one's going to take this kind of path. And what we know is that in equal times, they will fall equal distances. But if these are the two bodies to begin with, the blue will represent the center of mass, the midpoint between those two. Here, the midpoint will be here. And here, the midpoint will be there. And the midpoint will be there. So the center of mass will also follow a parabolic shape. But relative to the Earth, how does that acceleration compare? Well, the accelerations are the same. It's equal to G. There is nothing that can be done to make the acceleration greater than G. It's not going to be zero because it does accelerate toward the Earth. And for it to be less than G means that there's something else pulling it upward. So it will be equal to G. Question four. We've got an object tied to one end of a string moving at constant speed. So we're spinning it around. At any instant in time, that will give the direction of the velocity. It will be tangent to the radius. Now the speeds are equal. But velocity is magnitude and direction. So as it's traveling at constant speed in that circle, the magnitude stays the same. But the direction continuously changes. The direction here is different from here, is different from here, is different from here. At every instant in time, the direction is different. So therefore, it's accelerating. So which of the following is correct? The object is accelerating as moot. Well, we just said that's true. Its velocity is the same as its speed. Well, velocity and speed are not the same thing. The magnitudes might be, but the velocity and speed themselves will not be. The object does not require a force to keep its state of circular motion. That is false. Again, that is something we really need unit three to do. really need unit three to do that, but we know that one is a true answer. If the spring string breaks, it will keep its circular motion. Well, let's imagine that. If we were to snip this sprint string when it's here, it would continue off in a straight line like that. Now, we tend to think that it will fly outward, but if you are here and the 
object is here, it will fly off with the velocity it has at that instant. But as it travels farther and farther away, it does look to us like it's moving straight away. But it's not because it really is, it's because it's moving tangent to the circle. String breaks will keep its circular motion. False, that's what the string is holding it in place. The object will move radially away from the center. Well, that's what we were talking about here, this illusion. It's actually moving perpendicular to the radius. It's just that after it's traveled a while, it will look like it's displaced itself radially, but it isn't. So choice A. Question five. We have a uh, sphere is thrown upward at 45 degree angle to the horizontal. While it's still rising, it bounces off the ceiling. So here's the ceiling. It's got some velocity. Now, what's key is while it's still rising, that's important because that means when it hits the ceiling, the velocity is not zero. The vertical velocity is not zero. It bounces off the ceiling, and when it bounces off the ceiling, this velocity it has upon impact, when it bounces off in that direction, this velocity will be equal to the velocity it bounces off. So which one shows its horizontal and vertical velocity as a function of time? Now, we know, at least initially, that the horizontal velocity is Vx. And it's going to continue to have that velocity until a force acts on it horizontally. Now, what's interesting is that when the ball hits the ceiling, the force is that direction. And... What is not apparently obvious is that if this velocity is this before impact, it has this horizontal component and it has that vertical component. If it bounces off like this, notice it has the same horizontal and vertical components as well as the velocity. This velocity equals this velocity, this Vx equals this Vx, this Vz is equal and opposite to this Vz. So now the horizontal velocity, this picture tells us that Vx is the same throughout. Vx doesn't change. So this is correct. This Vx says it stays the same. This says the Vx changes, which is false. This one says the Vx changes, which is false. So we're down to 50-50. This vertical velocity says it has an upward velocity, like, say, 15 meters per second, and it decreases and decreases and decreases until it reaches zero. But what we said is it doesn't get to reach zero. It's still rising. So this is the case of it throwing up, in, of being thrown up, reaching the top, and coming back down on its own. This one's false, which makes the whole choice false. Now look what this one says. It's decreasing, decreasing, and before it gets to zero, it immediately changes to downward in the other direction. And that is correct. That's why it's choice B. And again, what we said is this VZ, the instant before it hits, is equal and opposite to the VZ immediately afterward. That's why that's the correct graph. Now, we can't answer these types of questions by being intuitive. We have to analyze them in tiny little pieces to pull out the little details that will clue us into the right answer.